Cav is not terrible. She's not bad. She's not even good because she's better than good. Cav is insanely strong and you're missing out on the potential you could unleash if you knew what I knew about Cav. Cav has a reputation of being completely garbage, especially at the top ranks, but I'm on a mission to prove that every single operator in R6 can be insanely strong if you use them right. People often get distracted by their teammates' operator choices instead of focusing on how they can work with those operators to actually win the game. Oh my god, this guy keeps picking the Blackbeard. He's so trash. He's so garbage. Shut up. You smell like a bitch. Throughout this new series, I'm going to try and convince you that every operator is a good pick so that you can play with less stress and focus on the things that really matter. Today we're covering Cav. Some people love her, others think she's terrible. The higher in ranks you climb, the lower Cav becomes in both popularity and respect. Respect my authority! But I actually think that Cav is one of the most underrated operators in the entire game right now, especially at the top ranks. It's over, baby. Ah, one on four remaining. Wall hacks v wall hacks. Who's gonna win? You'll be spotted. <laughs> Before we talk about the beast that Cav is and how to play her the right way, we need to be able to think about her the right way. Cav is very unique and the way she's played should be different from playing the other defenders. A lot of people say that she has a bad loadout and weak weapons, which is true if you're only thinking about her weapons and utility in isolation from her ability. In reality, Cav's loadout is actually extremely complimentary for her ability because of the massive damage that her weapons deal at close range as long as you're picking the right ones. Not this piece of hot, wet garbage. We'll talk about that a little later though. Basically what I'm trying to say is that her silent step ability allows you to seal the distance between you and the enemies without giving them the information that you're there because you're not making any sound and sound is information. This close range is where her guns thrive, giving you the advantage on the attackers. These weapons aren't designed to be played at these long ranges and to take every single gunfight that you see, so if you're playing her like any other defender in this meta, I can fully understand why you might think she's bad. My goal by the end of this video is to completely flip that understanding in your brain and give some insight that lets you see Cav in her true form, which doesn't rely on the attacker's negligence, hiding in corners, or getting lucky. A very common misconception is that the attackers have to have bad droning in order for her to actually be good. But before I explain why that's not true, let's talk about these fucking Cav players hiding in corners like little sweaty, wet, dirty rats which is part of the reason she has such a bad reputation. There's a difference between good spots to do this and very, very bad spots to do this. And the distinguishing factor here is the retreatability of the spot. If you're pinning yourself in an inescapable corner, you're going all in on hopes that the attackers never check that spot, which I personally think is a terrible strategy. They join me on nope. that. I don't think he saw me. There's a third! These people are horrible, dude. I'm stuck in a corner. You're Yana. You have flashbangs. You throw one flashbang, and I am fucked. However, if you're hiding in areas that you're able to escape after shooting a drone or being spotted, you're then able to pick a new spot to hide after you retreat and the attackers then have to drone and find you again or else they're risking being caught off and interrogated. The more you can shoot drones, fall off, and hide again, the more vigilant the attackers have to be with their info. If they don't drone at all, you get free kills as they walk through the map cluelessly. And if they do drone, you're not getting completely screwed and you're forcing them to waste more time in redrone areas over and over again. The second they stop doing that, you're right back to square one, playing the close range areas with your optimal close range weapons and dominating that position. It's basically like running a loop in a computer program. While you're roaming with Cav, you just hold a close range position. If the attackers drone, you just shoot the drone and pick a new position. Otherwise, if the attackers don't drone, you kill and interrogate the attackers that come into your zone, you pick a new position and repeat the entire process. It's been a while since I've done any sort of computer programming, but hopefully you'll get the point. Just follow the steps 
until the condition changes. Basically, if the attackers get any sort of information on where you are, you just pick a new spot that's close range and kill them if they can test it. The more you can do that, the more you'll get kills. This strategy therefore doesn't rely on the attacker's poor droning and is a fundamentally strategic way to waste time, keep the pressure on the roam, and be an extremely effective roamer. This is only half of the strategy with Cav though. A little later, we'll talk about flanking and different tactics that upgrade her power levels even further. Her silent step is by far her best asset, and I personally think of her interrogation as a bonus ability. This can single-handedly win rounds for your team if you get the opportunity to pull it off. Oh my god, what can I stop? Well, interrogations can be extremely strong, just like you saw, it's also a weak point for Cav. It's very easy to jump at the sight of a downed attacker, trying to rush into an interrogation, knowing how powerful it can be. If you can resist this temptation to interrogate every single person, you're going to be much better off though, and most of the time you shouldn't even try to do it. That's why I like to think of it as a bonus ability, and not as the main reason to pick her. Coming up red, coming up red, Ayana. Uh, in lounge, in lounge. Yana's down. I, I just re reviving down. Moment. Reviving moment right now. now that we know a bit better about how to think about Cav and why we need to think differently when playing her, let's talk about this shotgun and why you should always use it over her SMG. Firstly, her SMG is complete dog shit. I'd rather just try to knife the entire enemy team than use this polished turd of a gun. Seriously though, the pistol does more damage and they both have one-time sights. Plus, you can use the ability while using the pistol, but you can't with the SMG. And for those reasons, I'm out. But the shotgun, however, has a lot going for it. Firstly, shotgun equals sight setup, and sight setup equals higher chances that your teammates anchoring don't get absolutely plowed by the enemy team. Plus, if you come back to the site later in the round, it's going to give you more opportunities for playmaking and make life easier all around. Next, the shotgun is the ideal way to open up hatches. In that prep phase, opening up hatches ahead of time will let you use them as a fantastic escape route option at any point throughout the round without having to give the attackers the audio cue of you opening the hatch at that very moment. So open them up early and drop them anytime you need, wasting more time and keeping the attackers guessing. Lastly, the shotgun allows for new pressure points. Pressure points is a massive thing with Cav, so this will require a little explanation, but it could open your eyes to a whole new perspective of the game. Pressure points are the areas that people can be pressured from. The more entrances to a room, the more pressure there is on a player in that room, which is why impacting a wall or opening a hatch to that room creates more pressure. Having a flank watch, a flank drone, or a teammate in an adjacent room removes that pressure point from the picture. Let's say you're standing in open area on bank as an attacker. The two pressure points are kitchen and elevator hall because that's where you can get flanked from. But now, let's say the kitchen wall and the small office wall are open along with the two hatches. Now the defenders can come from kitchen door, kitchen wall, elevator hall, small office wall, small office hatch, or open area hatch for a total of six different pressure points. As a solo attacker, it's going to be nearly impossible to hold all of them at the same time, meaning your best option is to hide and hope you get some audio cues as to where you're being pushed from. Either that, or you take a guess and hope that you pick the right flank route, which are 1 in 6 odds in this case. This is why I think having the shotgun on cab is so strong. You can just pop a hole in a wall at any time and the attackers now have to avoid exposing themselves to it. It forces the attackers to play more cautiously and worry about you popping up at any second and trying to kill them. This is also why the impact grenades are so good throughout the round. You can instantly create create these new flank avenues and the attackers have to guess as to where you're actually coming from. Take this round on border for example. I impact the open area wall and push in through the passport door. Meanwhile, my teammates have pressure on here from the customs wall. This attacker has a 1 in 3 chance of picking the right fight and he chooses wrong, allowing me an easy kill. The more pressure, the easier it is to pull off these flanks and you can do it so quickly thanks to the impacts that it's hard to communicate even if they have a drone on you. Overall, these pressure points are not only part of the reason the shotgun is so much more ideal, but it's also why Cav is so incredibly strong. You can add pressure to the attackers while keeping the information from your movements a mystery because they're silent. Now, I've been advocating very hard for Cav throughout this video, but if she really is as strong as I'm saying, wouldn't everyone be playing Cav all the time? Well, yes, they would, but Cav is not the perfect operator. She has a few weaknesses too, which are important to be aware of so you know when not to pick her as well. Half of the point of this series is to understand operators better and know when it's ideal and non-ideal to act actually pick them. If you can pick the best operator for the job in pretty much every round, then you'll probably find that your performance is way better, 
giving yourself an inherent advantage just from the operators that you're picking. As great of a roamer as Cav is, the downside is that she does require some time on the roam to make things happen. If the enemies wipe your entire team early on, you're going to have to force gunfights in order to get kills back, which is obviously very difficult if the attackers are holding long range angles where her guns are much weaker. The attackers are continuously doing direct sight takes where they take minimal control and establish a solid flank watch, there's not going to be anywhere to break through to make plays, again with the only option left being to take direct oh. gunfights. Avoiding gunfights is Cav's biggest strength, and direct sight takes are the complete opposite of that. If the attackers are doing these though, your best bet is to hope that one strays off on their own and that you can get an interrogation to help out the rest of your team with a sight push. Trying to pull off interrogations at the wrong time is also rough as we saw earlier, and good decision making is a necessity to good performance with her. In other words, she is very difficult to be good with. You need extremely good map knowledge, playmaking abilities, and various tactical assets to trick the enemies. For these reasons, I'm giving Cav a 5 star difficulty level. If you can master her, she's a solid pick, but otherwise she can be a big detriment to your team, and a waste of an operator's ability. It's a much safer route to pick Jaeger, Capcan, or any other place and go operator that's utility remains in play even after you die. Dying as Cav though, you've left nothing to your team and you're an instant disadvantage. The longer you stay alive, the longer the attackers have to worry about that constant threat and the more impactful you become. Let me know your thoughts on Cav and whether you agree with me or not. If you have any other operators that you think are terrible, leave your opinion on them in the comments and maybe I'll cover them in my next episode. Good luck out there and stay friendly.